1934 and for other purposes. H.R. 9051, an act to amend the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 to increase recovery rebate amounts to $2,000 for individuals and for other purposes. In order to place the bills on the calendar under the provisions of Rule 14, I'd object to further proceeding in block. Objection having been heard, the bills will be placed on the calendar. Now, um... Mr. President. Democratic leader. Now, Mr. President. The Senate must address, and I will do that. But first, I must respond to the recent announcement by the junior senator from Missouri that he intends to contest the certified votes of the Electoral College when Congress meets to count those votes next week. The process for electing American presidents is provided for in our Constitution and laws. The process has been followed fully, fairly. The results have been duly certified by the governors of the states, and they've been reviewed and confirmed by the courts many times over. The result is that Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won the election by overwhelming margins in both the popular vote and electoral vote. The Biden-Harris ticket received more than 81 million votes, more than any ticket in American history. That was over 7 million more votes than Trump-Pence. The Biden-Harris ticket won the Electoral College, 306-232, the very same total that President Trump called a landslide for himself then, just four years ago. Since the election process, President Trump and his acolytes have lost more than 50 lawsuits falsely claiming fraud or other irregularities in the conduct of the 2020 election, including a unanimous decision by the Supreme Court to dismiss a lawsuit brought by the Attorney General of Texas and more than half the Republican members of the House. And today we heard from the junior senator from Missouri that he intends to object to election results, particularly in Pennsylvania, a state where the Trump campaign and its allies have brought more, no fewer than 13 lawsuits and lost every single one, many with Republican judges ruling. There have been only three individuals, three, charged with voter fraud in Pennsylvania. And in each case, the person voted for Trump. The effort by the sitting President of the United States to overturn the results is patently undemocratic. The effort by others to amplify and burnish his ludicrous claims of fraud is equally revolting. This is America. We have elections. We have results. We make arguments based on the fact and reason, not conspiracy and fantasy. On January 6th, the Congress will meet to formally recognize the Electoral College result. There is a very clear process to handle and dispense with objections from members of Congress to the counting of the result, and that's just what we'll do, dispense with them. The Congress will ratify the Electoral College's decision that Joe Biden will be president and Kamala Harris will be vice president on January 6th, and make no mistake about it, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be sworn in as president and vice president on January 20th. Now, let me return to the matters at hand. Today, the Senate will begin the process of overriding the president's veto on the annual defense bill. The House has already overridden the veto by a comfortable margin. I expect the Senate to follow suit and enact the NDAA into law over President Trump's evolving and ridiculous objections. Congress has passed the annual defense bill for 59 years in a row. It's an important opportunity to ensure our defense and security policies reflect the evolving challenges of our world and provide our service members and their families, as well as the Defense Department civilians, the support, resource, and training they need. The particular legislation includes a pay raise for troops, provisions that will allow the executive branch to, better, to be better postured and identify breaches to American cybersecurity. And in the wake of the SolarWinds hack, that might be a good policy to enact. Nonetheless, President Trump vetoed this legislation because it provides for renaming military installations that honor Confederate military leaders. 
or maybe because it doesn't address an unrelated social media issue. Think about it for a moment. The president vetoed a pay raise to living American soldiers in order to defend the honor of dead Confederate traitors. Well, the Senate will soon have an opportunity to override the president's objection and do right by those brave Americans who wear the uniform. Now, as I said yesterday, there are two, two major issues before the Senate right now. The annual defense bill and the vital and important effort to send $2,000 stimulus checks to American families. There are only a few days left in this session, and the Senate should consider both issues before adjourning. There's a very simple solution to this dilemma. Leader McConnell should bring both measures up for a vote and let the chips fall where they may. I believe both measures, the end the defense override and the $2,000 checks to American families will both pass. But at the very least, the Senate deserves the opportunity for an up or down vote on increasing the individual payments to the American people. So at the end of my remarks, I will ask the Senate to set a time tonight for a vote on the House bill to provide $2,000 checks. The Republican leader objected to a similar request I made yesterday, and it appears he may be considering a different bill that packages stimulus checks with other unrelated and partisan policies. So I want to be very clear about one thing. There is no other game in town beside the House bill. The only way, the only way to get to the American people the $2,000 checks they deserve and need is to pass the House bill and pass it now. The House is recessed for the year. Any modification or addition to the House bill cannot become law before the end of this Congress. It's a way to kill, to kill the bill. Make no mistake about it. Either the Senate takes up and passes the House bill, or struggling American families will not get $2,000 checks during the worst economic crisis in 75 years. Over the past few day days, the idea of increasing direct payments to the American people has united folks from all points of the political spectrum. And I salute the senator from Vermont for the good job he has done in bringing this forward to the American people's attention. An overwhelming bipartisan majority in the House supports the $2,000 checks. Senate Democrats strongly support these 2,000 checks. And our unlikely ally, President Trump this morning tweeted, 2,000 ASAP. For once, Democrats agree with something on President Trump's Twitter feed. Let's send $2,000 ASAP to working Americans who are facing the hardest and darkest days of the pandemic. After all the insanity that Senate Republicans have tolerated from President Trump, his attacks on the rule of law, an independent judiciary, the con conduct that led to his impeachment. Is this where Senate Republicans are going to draw the line? $2,000 checks to the American people? That is a bridge too far? Please. For the awareness of my colleagues, we can have this vote tonight and send the bill directly to the president's desk for signature. We can vote on the NDAA bill tonight and finish the Senate's business before the end of the year. All it takes is our Republican colleagues consenting to a simple vote on the House bill to provide $2,000 checks to the American people. Yes or no? Up or down? Do you support sending $2,000 to the American people or not? Let's have the vote. And so, Madam, Mr. President, I, I, I ask unanimous consent that the Senate proceed to the immediate consideration of H.R. 9051, a bill received from the House to increase recovery rebate amounts to $2,000 for individuals, that the bill be read a third time and passed, 
and the motion to, re be recon to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table with no intervening action or debate. 